G'day, how are you doing? Hopefully doing very well, keeping healthy and safe. I'm still recovering from my cold, but we'll slowly get there. Today we're gonna to look into the Acer Swift Go 16. It's a 16 inch ultra thin lightweight laptop. Now this is designed for you to pick up and go, and this is one of those everyday laptops. Now it does house the Intel Core 13th gen, and it's a performance processor in here. So this is the H series processor. It's great to see Acer have not cheaped out, huh? and actually put something that has a bit of performance there. So this can drive. Now it also is Intel Evo certified, so it ticks all those nice little masks for Intel, like for example, fast wake ups. Uh, it's got to hit a minimum standard of certain hours for the battery life. We've got high def webcam and display, and a few other things that Evo decides to have for the certifications. So, but it's good to see they've got all that ticked, and it is one of those laptops there. It's absolutely great to see. Now, one of the things that is a highlight of this a laptop, and this is great to see. Acer have finally entered in the OLED market. That's for this display here. Now I have been testing OLED laptops for other manufacturers and I absolutely love it because it gives very vibrant colors. We've got good color gamut coverage. So it has a big range and your darks are very deep blacks as well too. So I absolutely love it and you actually usually have a very bright display. All right, again, we do get a bit of a trade off with the battery life for that, but as our challenge grows, it actually gets better and better. So we're gonna actually test out this display a bit in later in the video. Now, we are also gonna look at the temperatures and fans, some of the features of this laptop as well. The display is a 16 inch 3.2K OLED display. So it has a resolution of 3200 by 2000. Now that means it has an aspect ratio of 16 by 10, and its maximum brightness is 400 nits. Now, it also has a refresh rate of 120 hertz, which is actually something very different to see and good to actually see as well, which is, means it's great for scrolling and also sometimes better for games. Now, as for the bezel, I'm actually impressed it's got quite narrow bezel on all four sides, which is really nice. It does have a glossy finish to it, but unlike other glossy displays, this one here doesn't look like it's a glass glossy display it's more like a matte half to a gloss so the reflections isn't as bad as i would see from a glass reflections i didn't have any issues consuming multimedia or working on documents in direct sunlight it is a gorgeous display to work with the display did exhibit slight ghosting in the ufo test but this is extremely minor and not something i would be extremely worried about unless you're playing competitive gaming I did not find any light bleeding around any of the edges and the blacks are nice deep blacks which contributes to the nice vivid colors from this gorgeous display. Measuring the color gamut coverage of the 3.2K OLED display, it resulted with 100% sRGB coverage, 96.4% Adobe RGB coverage, and 99% DCI-P3 coverage. Now this is extremely high. This display is absolutely perfect for photo and video editing tasks. This is a recording from the 1440p webcam from the Acer Swift Go 16. This is the video and audio unedited so you can hear and see what the quality of the webcam is like. Now our first much congratulate Acer for actually putting a high def webcam on this. Normally I ask for a 1080p webcam as probably hopefully being the industry standard. Now this is higher than that. That is absolutely fantastic. It gives us a little bit more options for content creation or do things with higher def. So 1440p, ooh, love it. Thank you very much for Acer. Now, as always in this webcam test, I've got two types of kind of turn on. I've got my one shirt turned on and also the downlights of this room turn on for ambience. So I'm gonna turn off my one shirt off. I'll see this adjust and I think it adjusts very quick there. Not just the exposure also of the colors as well. Very well. And the two downlights in front of me is a bit far away. So there's not much currently hit on my face. This is what I consider a dark environment. If you're in our office environment or outdoors, you should have much more light than what I'm currently at. And I'm gonna turn on my one shirt back on. And you see that just again adjusted pretty good and adjusted back to what it was before. Absolute fantastic. Now I'd love to actually hear what your thoughts of this webcam. Put a comment below. There are two speakers located on the bottom on either side of the laptop. When I tested out the maximum volume of the speakers, it managed to measure a peak of 79.5 decibels. Now I can actually consider these quiet speakers. 
Now, as for the sound quality, we get a little bit of bass. It does try to attempt the bass, but not really much bass there uh, happening at all. And we do have very strong mids. It is a very strong in the mids and balanced towards the mids. And of course, highs are doing all right. Now, I do have pretty good clarity. The reverb, it's all right. And also the acoustics is okay as well. Now, these speakers really remind me of business laptops of previous generations the sound quality of these speakers this is an area that acer can improve on on just not only the volume of the speakers as it's everyday outdoors would definitely have a little bit of hard hearing and also the sound quality i'm going to test out the two thunderbolt four ports to see how much power it is able to draw now the swift girl 16 it does come with a 100 watt power adapter this one i've got here which is the i7 version and we're going to test out the ports and i've got my monitoring tool here and this is the supply 100 watt power adapter that's connected up and it's just passing through now i am stress testing the laptop as well so it's got a 100% load on all the system resources and it's trying to drain its power for and charge the battery so i'm trying to draw as much power as i can and i can see it's anywhere between i would say i'm going to say about 50 to about 60 watts that's its maximum is really pulling uh, at the moment so you can run this laptop off a 65 watt power adapter or even a 65 watt docking station here for it so that's the top one and i'll just unplug this and we'll plug into the other thunderbolt 4 port or usb type c port and i can see that again it's pulling around about 50 i think maximum about 60. it does say uh, of course this cable you can see is reading that this has a power delivery of 3.0 and also it's a 100 watt power adapter on the end of this but there we go we're starting to finally get something here a little bit more so it looks like the bottom one was able to I, I saw it very quickly pulling nearly about 100 watts so the bottom wire seems to be charging a bit faster than the top one interesting enough for that the keyboard is a full-size keyboard with a number pad on the right. Now, the number pad is a little squish, but that's fine. At least it's there, and you actually get used to the actual size of that number pad very quickly. Now, the keys are backlit. There are three settings, off, low, and high, and also we have quite nice key travel on each. The keys are quite quiet, and they're relatively quite large for the size. Now they have a very smooth surface on each individual surface and we've got good spacing in between each keys. As for the trackpad, it is a large trackpad. It is a little offset from the center, but that's normal for a 16 or 15 inch laptop. And it is a very glass-like, silky smooth finish to it. Now it is a mechanical trackpad, which means it's hinged at the top and you can depress it as it will move along down the bottom, which is great. And it is also multi-gesture as well. The weight of the Acer Swift Go 16 is 1.64 kilos plus the 100 watt power adapter becomes a combined weight of 2.01 kilos you might be carrying around with you. Swift Go 16 comes with a 65 watt hour battery and I managed to get 7 hours and 52 minutes in the modern office battery life test in PC Mark 10. 1 hour and 32 minutes for gaming and 7 hours and 17 minutes for the video playback in the Procon battery life test. Now this is doing pretty good considering it is a 65 watt hour battery. It is smaller than I normally see in a 16 inch laptop and it also handled pretty well considering we are running an OLED display and from my testing from other laptops, OLEDs to play do consume more power than IPS displays. So I think it does very well and it really has all day battery life on this 16 inch. Looking at temperatures and fan noise, when I took my measurement, the ambient temperature in the room was 19 degrees Celsius and the ambient room noise was measured in at 35 decibels. Now before we get started, just to give you a reference point, my hand was around about 34 degrees Celsius at this sort of temperature. So I took my base measurement when the computer was idle and the hottest area around the keyboard measured a maximum of 32 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, stayed at a silent 35 decibels. And the average internal core temperature was 37 degrees Celsius. Then I put 20% load on the computer and that's pretty much average use. So it's tasks like office productivity work, surfing the web, streaming video. And the hottest area on the keyboard measured a maximum of 36 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it measured in a maximum of 36 decibels. So you barely hear the fan. 
and the average internal core temperature was 57 degrees Celsius. Then I put 50% load on the computer and the hottest area around the keyboard measured a maximum of 38 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, hit a maximum of 42 decibels. So do hear the fan a little bit and the average internal core temperature was 51 degrees Celsius. Then I put 100% load on the computer and the hottest area around the keyboard measured a maximum of 46 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it spun all the way up to a maximum of 45 decibels. And the average internal core temperature was 76 degrees Celsius. I also measured the bottom back cover while the computer was running 100% load and the hottest area around the bottom back cover measured a maximum of 50 degrees Celsius. So I really wouldn't be putting this on your lap when this is running on 100% load. And of course the fan noise stayed at 45 decibels. So most of the heat is located down this side of the keyboard near RAM where the free key is and that's because that's where the processor lives and then we've got the heat pipes going down here and there are twin fans on this side from the internals and the air will actually blow over the displays as the vents are covering uh, as they are covered by the display itself. So you see the airflow go over the display. Now you can adjust the fan profile. Now it is function F, you'll get standard function f again go to high fan mode and then function f one more time we've got a quiet mode and they're the three fan modes look at the stability performance of the processor over long duration time this swift go 16 is configured with an i7 13700h processor with intel reporting that has a base clock speed of 2.4 gigahertz and a maximum total boost of 5 gigahertz for the performance cores and 3.7 gigahertz for the efficiency cores now i do have pretty much a hundred percent load on all the system resources so that's the processor on all cores and the memory and also the storage and this has been going over for two hours and i can see the speed of the processor is ranging anywhere between 2.2 to about 2.7 gigahertz now most of the time it does try to maintain above the base clock speed of 2.4 gigahertz but it does dip down to about 2.2 so there is just some slight thermal frosting just to keep the base clock speed but most of the time it does does above it so you can see just now dip down there but it keeps it back up and now looking at the internal core temperatures we are ranging anywhere between 73 to about 80 degrees celsius so there is some headroom above there to go to 90 degrees but i can see the acer just trying to keep a well-maintained system without going the fan noise being too high and also giving just a little bit of headroom for any ambient high temperatures at the moment i am in around about a 19 degrees celsius room so this just gives you a bit of idea how this now i am pushing this beyond what this laptop should really be doing but they, they we're just stress testing to see how that goes in a way but this is a nice thin slim laptop as for the build construction of the Swift Go 16, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. This is entirely made of plastic. Hard huh, plastic is actually good plastic as well too. Now I do know that they are in the recycling program on this for Acer, so it's absolutely I'm not going to be really bagging them down for it. I think they've actually done a really good job, and it's good to see they're doing the, with, helping with the sustainability part anyway. But yeah, it is plastic at the top, it is plastic at the bottom, and on the sides, and also on the keyboard construction, and also the palm rest. So it's actually got a nice texture to it. It does scuff up a little bit, takes a little bit of mark, but you can pretty much just wipe it right off, and it's back to normal again. So I can definitely see that this is very durable and lasts for long periods of time over many, many years. So I don't see this having an issue at all, it also adds to a nice lightweight towards this is deceivingly light for a 16 inch i've given to a few people and they were well that's a 16 inch that's they were expecting much heavier and this is a lot of much lighter than that so this is great to carry in a bag there now i'll have to say we're going to do the good old my nice flex test and also bend test so let's see how it goes that's not twisting at all not twisting at all there and as for the keyboard there's not that much flex and all of there. It doesn't, I don't hear any sort of mechanical depressing or any weird things from the sound or cracking cat. So it actually is got a very well built construction on the keyboard area and also the palm rest here. So that's good. Now, as for the hinge, I'm just doing the one finger test here to see how that runs. And pretty much it grips down here and then it's quite smooth all the way to it. And that's the, what it is. I'll probably say that. What I would say probably about 220 degrees is what you've got here and it does 
at after 90 degrees it starts to lift up the bottom part using the display as there are two rubber bits on the each edge of where the hinge is you'll have two rubber bits and it lifts up the actual laptop up to actually create you a nice little angle for the keyboard and also gives you a bit of room for the vents that at the bottom here to breathe in to suck in cool air for the laptops i also got, got to do the wiggle test so i'm just going to have this clamp and i'm just going to wiggle this around see it will let go uh, at the moment it is quite clamped in on both sides i don't see it but I hope that's as small how the hinge is. So the hinge is actually nicely designed and has a very nice feel to it. I can see this opening and closing quite a bit and not having it too much of an issue. Here's the results of the benchmarks performed on the Swift Go 16. This one's configured with an i7 13700H processor with 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte SSD. And here's the result for Passmark, Citibench R23, PC Mark. 3D Mark, Geekbench, Crystal Disk Mark, Procon Office, Procon Photo Edit, Procon Video Edit, Pugin Photoshop, Pugin Lightroom, Pugin Premiere Pro, Pugin DaVinci Resolve, Blender, Furmark, Eugene Engine F1 2022, and View Pref. Let's have a look at internals. First off, you need to undo the 10 T5 Torx screws. Now, before we undo the back, I just want to show you a little special mention about this little hole here. Now, this is to actually reset the power or battery. If you've got some power or battery issues, you can press, use a paper clip, hold it down for 5 or 10 seconds, sometimes 30 seconds, and that will hopefully resolve your issue for even ghost charging power as well too. That will hopefully resolve that issue there for having to actually take this uh, back cover off to actually disconnect the battery. So that's just a nice little troubleshooting thing. Now to do undo it, I would actually suggest to start prying from the hinge and work your way across and work your way across there. Same with this side here of the hinge, work your way across. Now I've pre-undid the speed up time. So you can see now before we do it, I'll just flip around for those who are interested to see what's on the back hand side of this. And I am just gonna put this down here. Now we've got the 65 watt battery here and the battery connector is right underneath this black ribbon. We're not disconnecting it, uh, but that, if you do work on the side of the computer, it's a good idea to disconnect here if you are. Now, on the right hand side of the battery is the M.2 storage. So it is a 2284 man. It is heat shield wrap, which is really nice to see. And then there we can see the memory underneath here and underneath there. Now it is sold in memory, so you can't upgrade the memory after you purchase this. So make sure you get that configured correctly when you purchase this laptop. And above that is the processor. You see the twin heat pipes and it goes to two fans. Now the fans are smaller than what I was expecting to it to be, but they are there. Now interesting and we will have the Bluetooth Wi-Fi module right here. And what's really interesting is this ribbon here, this bridge ribbon. I'm not sure what it is, uh, as I don't have much about the specs on this on the bottom part of internals, but this is very interesting. There is a lot of empty space here. So my guess is this laptop chassis can be used for another one which has maybe discrete graphics. There's plenty of room for extra heat pipes and also room to put a discrete graphics uh, for it and a bigger battery. As you can see, there's still plenty of space here uh, as there is no second slot for M.2, which is a bit of a bummer there, but nice to see actual internals. Overall, the Asus Swift Go 16 pretty much ticks a lot of my tick boxes for an everyday laptop. Now that OLED display is absolutely nice. I love the look of OLED. It is really nice when you actually see it in person. Hopefully you get to see one of these in person. It's beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Now we've got great color, we've got nice brightness and vibrance, and it's just got nice things at all. Now, it is really thin, and this whole laptop is, even though it's 16, it is deceivingly light. Now, it is also quite durable. I love the amount of ports it has. That webcam, 1440p, thank you, Acer, for putting a nice high def webcam on there. Now, the keyboard is just, it's a nice good keyboard, and I love seeing that it still has a keypad it is squished but at least it's there and it actually can get adjusted pretty quicker that trackpad is even though recycle ocean recycled it's absolutely great it still feels absolutely fantastic i wouldn't know anything different about it i love seeing ace's sustainability program here at work is absolutely great there now 
As for the speakers, this is probably one of the improvements I would probably suggest to our Acer just to bring up the volume for it, as it just needs a little bit more volume, as if it's going to be every day and we're working outdoors, this is going to be a little bit of a struggle. So it is on the quiet side. That's pretty much how I did. It's done a fantastic job. I actually like it. Nice, minimalistic design. Now, I hope you find this video informative or enjoyed it. If you did, either support my channel, smash that like button for a share this video. It does help me out. And as always, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting and I'll see you next video.